This video will provide a non-technical explanation of types of consensus, specifically the differences between proof of work and proof of stake. To do this effectively, it must first provide a foundational explanation of blockchain, peer-to-peer -peer networks, decentralized ledger technology, and cryptocurrency. The goal here is to help you form a conceptual mental model of what these things are and more importantly, how they work together in a larger system. And the best way to do this is to use an analogy set in the physical world. So let's imagine a group of people standing around a circular tarp. You have Raja from Russia, Sven from Sweden, Bella from Belgium, Saeed from Saudi Arabia, Nasha from Nigeria, Indra from India, and Maria from Mexico. These people have come together from all over the world to play a game involving the tarp. Here, when they pick up the tarp together, it becomes taut like a platform, allowing the game to be played on its surface. It's important to understand that without the combined effort of everyone supporting the tarp, this platform would not exist. In this game, the players earn rewards by keeping track of activity occurring on the tarp's surface. To do this, the players follow a predefined set of rules or protocol. When any activity occurs in the tarp, say the addition of a red ball, it initiates a sequence of events. First, one of the players is chosen at random to announce the status of the tarp. For this example, we'll use Raja. Raja says, hey, I see that the tarp contains a red ball. Next, the other players supporting the tarp take turns indicating whether or not they agree with Raja. Now, if all the players agree, then a threshold is met and additional events occur. If they don't agree, then the process will start over with another player being chosen at random to announce the status of the tarp. For this example, we'll say that Sven, Bella, Said, Nasha, Indra, and Maria all agree with Raja, saying, yes, we too see that the tarp contains a red ball. At which point, a picture is taken of the tarp to document the agreed upon status, each player gets a copy of this picture for their own records, and Radya, being the player who went first to identify the status of the tarp, and with which everyone agreed, gets a reward, here a yellow ball. This reward is added to the tarp, and therefore becomes another item in need of being tracked, thus initiating the process to begin again. Like last time, a player is chosen at random to announce the status of the tarp. This time, it's Bella. Bella says, hey, I see that there's a red ball and a yellow ball, and by the way, my prior records indicate that before this, there was just a red ball. The other players then take turns indicating whether or not they agree with Bella. For this example, we'll say that Saeed, Nasha, Indra, Maria, Radya, and Sven all agree with Bella by saying, yes, we agree that the tarp contains a red ball and a yellow ball, and that our prior records indicate previously there was just a red ball. At which point, a picture is taken of the tarp to document the agreed upon status, each player gets a copy for their own records, and Bella, being the player who first identified the status of the tarp, and having prior records with which the other players agreed, gets a reward. Here, a blue ball, which is added to the tarp and therefore becomes another item in need of being tracked. It's important to note that when each player gets a copy of a new photo record, it gets added to the top of the previous, thus creating a chronological strip of records, kind of like a continuously growing photo strip from a photo booth. What makes this game interesting is that it allows for anyone to play and support the tarp. So say Chad from Canada rolls up. All Chad would need is an up-to-date copy of the photo strip records. That way, if he gets chosen to go first, he would say, Hey, I see that the tarp contains a blue ball, a red ball, and a yellow ball. And by the way, my prior records indicate that before this, there was just a yellow ball and a red ball. And before that, just a red ball. If everyone else agrees and the picture gets taken of the tarp, everyone gets a copy, and Chad gets a reward. Now let's say that Chad rolls up, but this time he brings an incorrect copy of the photo strip records. If Chad gets chosen to go first, he would say, Hey, I see the tarp contains a blue ball, a red ball, and a yellow ball. And by the way, my prior records indicate that before this, there was three yellow balls, and before that, there were three red balls. The other players would say, Yeah, we agree about the status of the tarp, but our prior records do not match yours. Therefore, the threshold would not be met, and everyone would be real sketched out about Chad. So what have we learned so far? People plus a tarp equals a platform. Everyone must agree on tarp activity. All activity is documented chronologically. New records are added to the top of the old. Everyone gets their own copy of all records. Anyone can participate in the game with their own copy of the records. Participation in the game is incentivized by rewards. And bad behavior equals no reward. So let's step this analogy up a notch. Imagine this time that each player has a corresponding pocket in the tarp where they store red rubber balls. Here the players use the exact same protocol as before to keep track of changes to the tarp in exchange for rewards. So one player is chosen at random to go first. This time it's Nasha. Nasha says, hey, I have two red balls. Endra has three, Maria has two, Raja has two, Sven has three, Bella has one, and Saeed has two. When other players then indicate that they agree, a picture gets taken of the tarp, everyone gets a copy for their records, 
and Nasha receives a red ball as a reward, which gets added to her pocket on the tarp and therefore becomes another item in need of being tracked. Now before the next cycle begins, let's add some complexity in the form of exchanges. This activity initiates the protocol to begin. This time Sven is chosen at random to identify what happened. Sven says, hey, I gave a ball to Saeed, Nasha gave a ball to Bella, and Ender gave a ball to Raja. So now I have two, Bella has two, Saeed has three, Nasha has two, Indra has two, Maria has two, and Raja has three. And by the way, my prior records indicate that before this, well, you get the idea. The other players then indicate whether or not they agree with Sven's identified tarp activity, status, and prior records. Which they do. So a picture gets taken of the tarp, everyone gets a copy for their records, and Sven gets a reward which gets added to his pocket on the tarp and therefore becomes another item in need of being tracked. So in this game, the cycle of activity, identification, agreement, documentation, and reward just keeps happening over and over and over. And as you may have guessed, in this analogy, the red balls represent cryptocurrency, the pockets represent wallets, the tarp represents a decentralized ledger, the people represent a peer-to-peer -peer network, and the ever-growing photo strip represents blockchain. Here, the peer-to-peer -peer network actually consists of computers, also known as nodes. And like the people with the tarp, when the nodes come together and connect, they are able to support a decentralized ledger between themselves, something that doesn't actually exist physically per se, but you get the point. Cryptocurrency is stored in wallets. Wallets are kept track of by a decentralized ledger. The decentralized ledger is supported by a peer-to-peer -peer network. The peer-to-peer -peer network consists of nodes located all over the world, which use blockchain as a means to document changes chronologically. This system follows the same protocol as described in the previous analogy. Activity occurs on the decentralized ledger. A node in the peer-to-peer -peer network supporting the ledger is chosen to state the changes and its prior records. If the other nodes in the network agree, they come to a consensus, and a new block is added to the ever-growing chain of records held by each node. Further, the node that went first, leading the consensus, gets a reward in the form of more cryptocurrency. So you might be wondering, how exactly does a node get chosen to go first? This brings us to the purpose of this video, understanding the types of consensus, specifically the differences between proof of work versus proof of stake. Proof of work. In a proof of work system, in order to lead consensus and earn rewards, the nodes compete to be the first to solve a cryptographic puzzle. To understand this conceptually, let's use the following analogy. Imagine that each node has a tray of dice. However, instead of dots, these dice depict letters on each side, similar to the game Boggle. Except here, the objective is to shake the tray until all A's appear on top, something that's very hard to do, but easy to verify. In a proof-of-work system, the node that accomplishes this first gets to lead consensus. It's important to understand that each shake of the tray is an attempt at solving the puzzle. Therefore, the faster a node can shake the tray, the more likely it will arrive at the solution before the other nodes. Further, each shake of the tray requires energy in the form of electricity. Therefore, the faster the node, the more energy it consumes. In order to partake in a proof-of-work system, one must invest in a node that far exceeds the computational power of an average computer and consumes far more energy. In a way, this is comparable to other industries where a great deal of work and energy must be done in order to obtain a desired outcome. Take for example all the machinery and energy required to dig for gold, silver, and or other precious metals. So it makes sense that in a proof-of-work system, this process of using energy to do the work of solving a complex puzzle in exchange for a reward is called mining. Proof of Stake In a proof of stake system, in order to lead consensus and earn rewards, nodes more or less enter into a lottery by putting up coins in their wallet as stake. To understand this conceptually, let's use the following analogy. Imagine that for each coin in a node's wallet, there's a corresponding ticket in a communal bowl, similar to a raffle. In a proof of stake system, when a ticket is selected from the bowl, the node it belongs to gets to lead consensus. It's important to understand that, in a proof-of-stake system, nodes are not required to solve a complex cryptographic puzzle, therefore one can partake using a common computer. However, it does require that the node's wallet contain cryptocurrency, which acts as the node's entries into the lottery. Here, the more cryptocurrency a node has, the more likely it is to be selected to lead consensus and earn rewards. In some proof-of-stake systems, nodes are required to stake a certain amount in order to partake at all. In summation, in order to lead consensus and earn rewards, in a proof-of-work system, nodes are required to solve a complex cryptographic puzzle, 
which requires a lot of computational power and energy. Here, the process is called mining. In a proof-of-stake system, nodes are required to hold or stake cryptocurrency, which act like their entries into a lottery or raffle. This process does not require a lot of computational power or energy, and is referred to as minting or forging. That concludes this video's explanation of the different types of consensus, specifically the differences between proof-of-work versus proof-of-stake.